Hey guys, I'm Volin and welcome to part 4 on how to make a video player inside of Godot. In today's episode we'll be decoding the audio of the video file. Which sounds like an easy task, except for it is not quite as simple as just taking the audio data and putting it inside of Godot. But yeah, let's get into it. The past couple of episodes I've been working in 4.2.2 RC2, the Godot version, but they actually uh, released the 4.2.2 version now. So it's officially released, it's not, it's not a release candidate anymore. That means a couple of things. First of all, our Godot project itself will be in 4.2 right now. I, I have not quite updated the client yet, so... To update the client, you basically go to the folder where you save your things, your executables, you go into VS Code, Settings, and you can just replace this name. Voila, Open Workspace with Godot Editor. And the first thing that you'll notice when trying to start the project is that it will fail. And that is basically because, yeah, we're using 4.2.2 now. So there have been updates to the Godot CPP library, to the repo, and we just sync changes. Python, build.py. Normally this should not take too much time. Some things may have changed, but... Okay, and when it's done building, let's open Workspace with Godot Editor again. Let's put it on the correct tab. Normally this should not give any errors and start. Okay, so we also don't get any errors over here, which is a good sign. <laughs> Next up, we go to the Explorer and let's go into our GD extensions, Gozen and into the video.hpp file because we need to do a small amount of changes. So over here, let's declare everything into a null pointer just to make certain. I think that's why the issues were happening last time with the audio stream, um, not 100% certain, but it's highly likely somebody in the Discord server also talked about that. Okay, so after we added these null pointers, one more thing that we need to do is create a function to get the audio from the video file. So we create a reference to audio stream WAF. We call it get audio and we close it because we'll, we'll, we will define a function in the CPP file. So this will give an error because it's undefined. So let's quickly include this audio stream WAF dot HPP. And normally this error should disappear. Okay, now this should be WAF wow, capital. Okay. And now this error should disappear. Okay. So this is basically all we need to do inside of the header file. So let's close this and let's open the CPP file. So we need to create this function here. And let's first create the ref audio stream WAF wow, because that's what we'll, we will be returning to the end, uh, to the editor, to the Godot editor. So we copy this, audio waf, is just a name, um, and we use mem new audio stream waf. So what mem new does that it's a Godot function that act, that initializes the class. So we have an empty class to uh, an empty instance to work with. It's basically the same as this dot new. Next up, we really need to make certain that the file is open. If it's if the file is not open, then issues will happen and things will crash. Oh, and we also need to make this part of the video class. So we have access to everything. So if it's not open, if the video file is not open, then we print an error and we just return the empty audio file. So the local audio WAF. Now, when you're getting data from a video file, you have a lot of packets and every packet has a frame or multiple frames or parts of frames. So we need to really make certain that when we start reading the audio file, that we start from the very beginning, that we actually start from like packet number one. So we have all the data. If we don't have all the data, then problems start happening. So first set the seeker to the beginning. And for this, um, let's go into the header file one more time. I kind of want to have one more variable here. So we have an int response and we just default it to zero. And now how do we seek to the beginning of the packets of that audio stream? Well, kind of easy, kind of not. Because we don't really know where exactly that is located and how to get there. So it basically has to go over the entire data or like go to random moments in the data and try to find the beginning. So 
it's not as easy as just like, okay, we need frame number zero, let's just go to frame number zero. That's not really how it works. So there's a function, av, um, oops, seek frame, this one. And this variable, first of all, it returns an int, integer, and that's why we created a response. What do we need? We need a av format context. We have that one, so av format context. By the way, if you are following this series, please start from part one, else you really won't know what's going on here. <laughs> Next up, we need the stream index. Um, we don't have the index, but we have the um, the stream for the audio. So stream, AV stream audio, and we take the index because the index number is also saved inside of the audio stream. Next up, we need a timestamp. Well, we're looking for timestamp zero because we need the beginning of the file. And next up, the flags. Which flags do we need? AV seek flag frame because we're looking for a frame. And we also need to add AV seek flag any. If you take, by example, you can take backward and you can take any. From backward, it really starts from the end of the file. Starting from the beginning of the file of the, of the data, it's apparently more difficult. So we choose any. And normally that's, this should work. But in case it doesn't work, if response, is smaller than zero if it's a minus value then we again print an error so let's just copy this and the error is basically we can't seek to the beginning if this happens it's just a memory issue that there's not enough ram available so normally this should not happen and if it happens it's the worst case scenario and then you better just shut down the program altogether because there's probably some kind of memory memory leak happening okay so set the seeker to the beginning check one more thing that we need to add before we can fully check it is AV buffer. Can I find it? Um, AV codec flash buffer. And we just take the AV codec, codec context for the audio. And what this basically does is reset the internal codec state, flush internal buffers, and it should be called when seeking or switching to a different stream. So check. Okay, and next up we need to allocate some space for the packet and for the frame. To do that, we go back into our header file and we create something new called AV frame. And we call this just AV frame. And then we also need the same uh, to, to do the same for packets. Packets. And over here, oh, also packets. So we have AV frame and AV packets. And of course, these also need the pointer stuff. And let's also define a null pointer to them. And because these are also points that we can allocate, we should also add these to our close videos. So if AV frame, then B basically f uh, free it. So AV free, no, AV frame, frame free. And to just pass the AV frame that we just created. And this will also need the pointer stuff. So normally this should work, yep. And then we do the same for the packets. So over here, we take our AV packets and we allocate some new data out with AV packets and um, allocates. And we do the same for frame. And then we also need a packed byte array, which we will call L um, audio data. Because we need to create everything into a packed byte array because that's the way that um, Godot handles data, handles arrays. If you want to create the L audio of, we need to allocate this data, this L audio data inside of this stream file, inside of that uh, variable. And one of the things that we will also do already is just to make certain that we don't forget about it. It's also free the data. So let's, let's take this. And let's put it at the end of the file, just so we don't forget about this. And then we also need audio creation. And we need to set the audio, uh, this audio format. We'll take the highest bitrate available, which is um, F, uh, 16 bits, format 16 bits. Let's set the enum value for this. So uh, let's just type 16 bits, maybe I can find it. 16 bits, yeah, format 16 bits. So that's how we set the format. Then we also need to assign the data, set data, and 
yeah, basically we just assigned the pack byte array that we just created here. So L audio data. Then there are two more important things for the audio file that you need to set. So we need to set the stereo and the mix rate. The mix rate is important because, well, mix rate, bit rate, because else your audio will be or too fast or too slow. Set mix rates. Let's leave this one empty for now and copy paste and set stereo. And these are basically all things that we can get from the things that we created before. So AV, codec, context audio, and we go to um, byte bitrate. And that will set the mix rate correctly. I don't think it's bitrate, um, sam sample, sample rate, okay. I'm not actually certain right now, so I'll quickly, I'll quickly ma make it to do here. So bitrate, um, that's something we can do later if we run into any problems. And next up, we need to know if it's stereo or not. And how do we do that? We basically check how many channels are inside of the audio file. So again, AV, codec, context, audio. We go to number of channels. Um, I think this one, channel layout, probably. Then we go to the number of channels. And if the number of channels is bigger or the same as two, then it will be true and then it will be stereo. If it's bigger than two, um, yeah, I, I'm not certain if Godot supports 5.1 audio, but yeah, normally this should be sufficient. It won't be playing in mono. And an important one because else this won't work, we return L audio WAF. Let's have a quick build to see if we have any errors so far. Okay, that looks like it is done. Inside of our Godot project, we need to um, put this one out of ready because else we won't be able to get the audio in another function or get the frames on the video file. Because the moment that ready is over, the video file gets deleted because we created the video file inside of ready. So we open the video file and then we get the audio. Get the audio, let's quickly reset. Um, in non-existent function, get audio in base video. Ah, yeah, no, no. In the header file, we need to also assign this function. So let's bind the methods. Let's create some space, get audio. Voila. And now if you compile, now we will get access to the function. Okay, and this is working. But this returns an audio stream. So let's create an audio um, stream player. Let's just call this audio stream one because I may implement a function to get access to all the audio streams. Right now we're only getting the latest one that we find. Um, that's something I sh I'm not certain if I actually explained. Inside of our code file itself, inside of the CPP file, we loop through all the f to all the streams. But this will always assign the last one that we come across. So we won't get the first one and we will, we will only get the last one. So we won't get all available streams, which may be a problem for audio. I'm not so certain about video, if that will cause any problems. Normally not for most videos. So just, just so you know, so later on, we will probably change this function to create an array of different audio streams. Let's go back to this function. Let's run this. So this is working and let's try to play it. So a audio stream 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 is and that is what we assign from the video so video dot get audio becomes a stream of audio stream player and let's just play the audio to see what happens dot play so probably nothing at all if we if we will take this and print the length i don't think we will get anything get length normally if we will start we will see a zero because we actually we have not added any data yet. So this is basically an empty packed byte array. So next up, we need to read through all the packets and the frames. How do we do that? Well, we create a while loop. So while AV read frame, so whilst, while we can continue to keep reading new frames in, we can create the out of file. So we should not go out of this while loop. So AV read frame and what variables and uh, arguments does this need? the format context and the packets. So AV format context and the AV packets. That should not give any errors. And this will basically read all the frames. So return the next frame of the stream. So with AV seek frame, we went to the very beginning of the audio, audio data. And with this, we will go over 
each data one by one. And this name is actually kind of wrong because it says AV read frame, but it's actually it does not actually read the frame, it gives you the packet and not the frame. So not 100% certain why the naming is like that, but yeah. AV packet will get filled, so we need to unwrap it. So AV packet unwrap, whoops, unwrap AV packets. So that's a basically clean AV packet so we can put new data inside of it. But now, this will read through every single frame. This will not only read um, through the AV stream audio. So it will go to a specific part in the file where the audio stream index begins, but that's it. It will go over all the other streams as well if it finds the opportunity to. So we need to make certain that the stream of the packet is um, linked to the AV audio stream. So AV packets, we check for the stream index. And we need to make certain that this is the same with AV and stream audio index. So if this is the same, we continue else we already unwrap the packet and go to the next one. So next up, we have a packet. What do we do with the packet? We try to decode the packets. So AV packet sends, AV send packet, AV, AV codec send packet, okay. And what does this give? First of all, it gives an integer, so response, okay. And next are the arguments that it needs. It's an AV codec and a AV packet. So again, the AV packet, AV packet and beginning, AV codec context audio. And this will send the packet to this codec for decoding. Of course, we need to check if the response is bigger than zero. And then we basically need to break out of the loop and pro possibly also print an error just in case. So we actually know what's going on. Then we have a decoded packet, but we still need to receive it. But for that, we will put an other while, uh, while loop because in a packet, there can be multiple frames. So whilst um, response is um, bigger or the same as zero. So basically if something went wrong, by example, the frame could not be read, then we do something. So like I said, we need to receive the frame because we just sent the frames. We sent the frame to the codec and now we need to receive the frame from the codec. So AV codec receive, um, receive frame. And AV codec receive frame, it also gives a integer. So let's put response as the receiver of that integer. And again, we need to add the codec and the AV frame. So AV codec context audio and AV frame, because we need to write, like put the data inside of the frame, AV frame variable. And then we have a special case. So if response is the same as AV reads um, an AV error, and then E again, yep, E again. So try again, or response is end of file. EOF, um, AV, EOF, um, there should be an ah, AV error, EOF. Okay, so this one, so if there was a problem reading the file because we need to do it again, or we reach the end of the file, then we do something, um, which is basically just break because nothing really bad is happening. Um, most of the time, this will not cause any trouble. Okay, um, this will be double. Okay, and then else if, because there's only one, function here, one thing that needs to happen, we don't actually need the brackets, um, as if response is bigger than zero, uh, response is smaller than zero, then it's probably an error. And that's probably just an error decoding, uh, decoding the audio frame. So we can basically copy this again, and change this to frame. Again, this is the kind of error that only will happen if you run into some kind of memory problems. And when that happens, we just break. Okay, but we received the frame. So we should also AV frame and ref. So we also need to, again, clean the AV frame at the end of this while loop, just to make certain that new data can be put in. Um, if you go over this function, we can also see a little bit more. So in reference all the buffers reference by frame and resets the frame field. So basically kind of a cleanup. Which is different from free because free will basically free the frame and uh, yeah, all the data that has been assigned to it, so yeah. Okay, so next up, we want to get the data from this frame and actually put it inside of our L audio data because we need that to actually be able to put it inside of our audio WAF itself, audio WAF stream. 
I don't actually know how to pronounce Waff, but yeah, I, I just say Waff. So next up, we need a size T. N now it will get a little bit complicated again because we need to re like actually kind of convert the data so it can get into the packed out uh, packed byte array so we can actually put it in the outer file. So first we need to know how long is the data. So and pad it. Um, let's create it a local local and pad it uh, line size. And this will be AV frame um, in the channels, no, samples, in the samples. And we need to take this amount of samples and we need to, um, well, basically do it times the amount of bytes per sample. AV get bytes per sample. So this will basically tell us how much space we need in the packed byte array to allocate the data to it. Um, like, yeah, it will make sense more, uh, more later. But yeah, we basically need to make certain that it has the same amount of size as a 16-bit file, because over here we make it into a format 16 bits. Sample format S16, this one. And that should not give any errors, and that will normally give us the size that we need for a packed byte array. So first up, we create a vector, so SD vector and this will be an u int 16 because 16 bits let's call this one l audio vector to keep everything a little bit in the same style oh, and we basically need to assign the l and palette line size to it and for the next step we need to create a temporary uh, byte array and we will assign that in here because we will also need this byte array for the video file, if I'm not mistaken. So, packed byte array, packed byte array, and we will call this just byte array to keep it very, very simple. And we can just leave this empty because we will always assign it before using it. And so here, byte, oops, byte array is a packed byte array like this. I think the packed bytes arrays, like all the packed arrays are the only ones that you can initialize like this instead of C++. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's how it works. Okay, so we assigned our new packed byte array. We will also need to put the AV frame data inside of the vector. So let's do that before doing the packed uh, byte array things. So mem copy, we need to take the L audio vector because mem copy will basically copy the memory from one uh, from one place to the other, so destination source, so first destination, and the destination is our L audio vector, and the source is AV um, the, the, uh, AV frame, and we take the extended data, oh extended data, and we take um, I think it's the first one, so zero. So this can get a lot more complicated real quick. Um, this is just a very basic example of how things work. This is giving me an error. I think I think we should take the data from this. So this should normally do it, yeah. And again, we need to make certain that we take the L unpadded line size. Because we need to have the amount of size that we need to convert. Okay, and next up our byte array. So now we need to put the data from L audio vector inside of this byte array. And before we need to do that, it will be better to resize the byte array that it already has the necessary space available. Byte array dot resize. And we basically take unpadded line size and we do this times two because we have a uint 16 array. Packed byte arrays are eight bits inter arrays, integer arrays. So yeah, cause some issues. So the 16 bits, we need to split them up into two separate eight bits, which makes it that we need to do it times two because 16 divided by two is eight. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> GD extensions and some of the things inside of it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of figuring out. And with this resized array, now we need to create an, off an offset. So you in 16t. So we need to create an off offset um, to know where we need to put the data. And let's just call this L bytes offsets. Um, this can be initialized as zero for a size t. And let's, let's just call this int. And if the i is smaller than an unpadded line size, 
then we continue um, well, until that happens and we add to the i. And next up we need to create a new um, value. I know this is quite a lot. This is kind of annoying and this is all because Godot has its own types, their own types of array, arrays which make things a lot more complicated than they should probably need to be. It would also help if um, they would just have a packed byte array for 16 bits and not only for 8 bit. That would also help lots. But basically what we need to do in here, we need to create a new uint 16. This will be pointer u a uint 16. Oh, I, I, okay, I think this should be, I, I'm not 100% certain if there's a difference, but I know it's just, um, yeah. Let's keep it at that. That's how I have it in my notes. So <laughs> I don't think it actually makes that much of a difference. But then we take the data from AV frame, extended data. Oh, data, not buff. Again, number zero, because we only need the first part. And then we take the integer from it. Um, the I, the, the number of this thing, <laughs> of this value. Next up, we should put it in the byte array. So encode, whoops, we need to encode uh, to S16. For this, we will need the byte offsets to tell in which location it should be saved. So byte offset and then the value. So L value. And then we need to increase the byte offset so it stores the, it encodes the data inside of the correct position. So this will be plus and then size, size of size of and then a u int. So we store this amount of data, this has a certain amount of bits and we need to, um, a certain amount of bytes and we need to store that offset so we know where to store the data later for the next uh, next value in the next piece of data, next couple of bytes. I hope this makes a little bit of sense. I know this is not the uh, easiest to get into, um, yeah. This is also just the first part because you will see that this actually won't work. Um, just to give a quick spoiler, we don't actually have the correct data yet. Um, the data of a video file is not always 16 bit. We imagine right now that it's AV, like um, 16 bit data. Chances are it's highly likely that it's not 16 bit data, but that's for later. Let's break our heads about that later and well, or you'll break your head when trying to listen to the audio that we get from this. And yeah, basically we have the data, data. so um, l audio data dot append array, and we just take the byte array that we created before, and voila, normally this should do something. Okay, so that build it. Let's quickly run our project. It still says zero. Hmm, okay, that's not what I expected. I, actually expect it to at least have some amount of data from it. I think it's because we don't get the data yet. Okay, so that did not seem to do anything. So let's just go over the rest of the parts that we need to make it actually working. For that, again, I said that we don't have the AV sample. We don't know if it's actually a 16-bit format. I think that's what's going wrong here because I'm using a different format than I used when I was trying this all out. So let's go into our header file and let's create a, an SW resample variable. So the SW stuff are actually structs. So we need an S, a struct SWR context and we will call this, um, well, first of all, it needs to be a pointer and let's just call this SWR context. I think that's more than enough. Should not give any errors. So we take this and we go back into our video file and our code file. Let's minimize audio for so far, uh, for now. First of all, close video. We need to add some lines in here. Because we create a context in memory, we also need to remove all that data. So let's put that in between this here. So if SWR context, then we do SVR um, free context, SWR free. Probably correct. Spacing. And then we do the pointer SWR con context. And normally that should work and not give any errors. Yep, that works. Okay, so we have this line added to the 
well, to these two lines added to the closed video. So that will be cleaned up properly if we close the application or close the video um, class itself, the instance. And then we go into the auto decoder setup of open video. And after opening the codex, we need to start creating the SWR context. Um, and first, AV format um, context audio, AV codec context audio, request, um, request sample format, and we could set this on the 16 bits just in case. Sometimes this works directly, sometimes not. So basically what this will do is the decoder will decode to this format if it can. If it cannot do it, then it cannot. S16. And now we start with uh, setting up the SWR context. So SWR alloc, and we need to select uh, number two, ops two. And this will, come, um, if you go over here, we can see it returns an integer again. So let's add that to response. And this is a long one. This, this, is, <laughs> this requires a lot of information. So first of all, it needs an SVR context. So SWR context, we created it just now. This needs a pointer thing. And next up, we need the channel layout, the out channel layout. And we won't really change the channel layout. So we just go to AV codec context audio channel layout. Next up, we need the out sample format. So the sample format that we want is the S16. And next up, we need the sample rate that we want to go and uh, get out of the video. This also won't really change at all. So codec context audio, and we just select sample rates. And next up, we can basically completely copy this line. So we have our channel in, our channel, uh, our sample rates in, and then what we get in, like what format does the audio have by default? So we assign that AV codec context audio formats, get formats. No, sa sample format, sample format, sample FMT. And next up, the last two things that we need are um, a log offset and a log context. So we don't really use that. So we just put that on null and a null pointer. And I think that's all we need normally. So this is how we allocate and set up the SWR context, the struct. Next up, of course, we need to check if response is actually correct. If no errors happened. So if the response is more than zero, something went wrong. And then we need to print an AV error. For that, we will create a new function. So let's go under close video. Um, let's also define it over here. So close video. In between here, we need to print an error. Or at least create a function which can take the AV error and convert it to something more readable for us. So void print AV error. And what do we need for this? Um, well, we need the uh, we need the response from uh, from FFM pack itself. So a response, and we also need the message. So const char, and let's just call this message. So let's copy this line. Oops, let's copy this line. Video context. Uh, well, the whole coding file, CPP file, video brackets open, and I. I so I don't think we need the response. Um, let's let's remove the response. We can just take the response from here. So not really that big of an issue. Right now we need to create a new character array because C++. <laughs> and we will just call this local error buffer. And we will just create the maximum possible size. So AV error max string. So this will basically create the maximum size for the error string. And then we have a V error, str error. I think that's the one. We add the response codes to it. Next up, we add a character array. Um, well, the other character array that we just created. So let's take this one, add it in here. And next up, we need the error buff size. And for this, let's, oh, uh, let's see, let's put this one. Uh, and for this, we just do, size, size of, and we just take this, the size of the buffer character array itself. And next up, let's print it so we can actually see it inside of the Godot editor. So utility functions, print error. Next up, we need an SED 
string. That's a message. Okay, and we do that plus uh, plus the l error buffer. So we have our entire message. We have our own message, and we have the error buffer itself. And we need to do this to a c s t r. And normally that should not give any errors. Okay. I don't actually remember why exactly I do this because we will be passing a normal string. I think it had to do with the whole C++, uh, C++, uh, C++ stuff. So what we actually do here is just AV, um, no, print AV error. And the message will just be fail to obtain SWR context. And that's an explanation mark. The L error buffer, so the buffer, uh, the error from a uh, from F of impact itself will go after that. So let's also add an N and a T. But yeah, if this happens, we basically need to close the video because yeah, something went too wrong that we can not fix. So and we return. But then something else can go wrong. So else if as it is, let's already put our close video because we will have to close the video. So first we need to check is if SWR context is actually something. And I just realized I'm, I'm using SWR context here. Let's let's change the naming of this. Um, so um, CTX. We've been using this kind of naming for contexts in the previous uh, in the previous variables. So let's also put this here. So that should work. Okay, so if we cannot find it, something went wrong. So utility functions print error. And this will basically happen if we could not allocate. But there's also something else that we could check for. So SWR init. So let's see what we need. We need to context itself. So yeah, if this again, if this is smaller than zero, it probably printed an error because we cannot initialize it. So we need to initialize it here. That's what we're doing. So initialize its context after used. Uh, user parameters have been set. This is important because else it will not work. And this actually also returns an AV error. So let's let's just print that error as well. And let's quickly build the application and let's see if it actually prints working. SWR contexts. So I have one error inside of here. Um, where context? Oh, okay, inside of here. So let's. CTX, let's create a name, um, let's use a new naming, Python build, okay, let's run this, no, normally this, this, this had to be working. So let's go into Godot editor and let's read our very readable crash log. So libc lib sw resample, so something is wrong with our resampler, it did not print anything. Mm. So I think this is the error. So if you remove this, we built. So we still not have the slash n slash t. Let's see. Okay, yeah, that was the error. So we just cannot have the. I think that's because this is not a string that we're passing. We're passing a const char. Yeah. Let, let's see. That's something I'll figure out for the future for the next couple of videos. Um, but yeah, it's working. So that's a good sign. Now we need to go back to our get audio function. So. How do we convert the data? First up, we need to create a new frame. But why would we create a new frame? Uh, basically not to mess with uh, our previous frame. <laughs> so we have an AV frame, L AV new frame. Let's just call it new frame. So AV frame alloc. We need to allocate some data to it, some well stuff. We need to allocate some memory to it. So AV frame alloc. Next up, we need to set the format of the new frame. So Format is the same as the format that we need. So AV sample format 16. Let's quickly hide the side bar so we have more viewable space. Let's also minimize this one a little bit. And double quotes. Next up, we need the channel layout, which is basically the same as the current AV frame channel layout. Like it's it's basically the same data, only converts to different formats. Then we need to do the same for um, sample for the sample rates, but the number of samples that's that's different. So L A V new frame because we will be converting the data, so the number of samples may also be different. Um, I'm not hundred percent certain how this works, but we yeah, it's better to do it I think. So as we are get out samples. 
and we just take AV frame, AV frame, and the number of samples. Normally this should work, but SWR is a struct, so yeah, we need to have the SVR context here. So SVR CTX, I think that's enough. Yep. So our new frame is made and it's ready to be accepting the data from AV frame because it will basically contain a copy. So AV frame get buffer, get buffer to allocate a needed space. So L AV new frame. And this will create a integer as a response, which is yeah, the adder. Um, we need a V frame and an int align. Um, let's just align to zero. I think zero is the correct one. Um, align required buffer size alignment if equal to zero. The alignment will be chosen automatically. Uh, it is highly recommended to pass zero here unless you know what you're doing. We don't know what we are doing. So zero. So we have a response. So of course we need to check if we actually did something wrong or not. So if response, by now you probably know the drill, if the response is smaller than zero, something went wrong. I think at this point we should also probably um, unwrap the normal frame itself. So let's also do that, the, the main frame. And normally this will also create an AV error. So um, yeah, a negative AV error on our, yeah. So we print AV error. Oh, wait, I just realized. So this actually here, so the SWR in it returns an error code. We should have this in a different if statement. So this response is this. This should become a utility functions print error again. Response is smaller than zero. And for here, we will just say um, cools init initialize. SWR and just return. And I think that's all we need to do. Also better here. And we should probably remove this. <laughs> okay, so now we initialize it correctly and the AV error stuff will work as well. Um, so back to the AV frame get buffer. Normally this should, uh, well, we should get a AV error from this, so print AV error. And this will basically mean that we could not allocate a new um, frame for WSR to use. So next up, we need to convert the data from AV frame, from the original frame, to AV new frame. So basically convert all data to the 16-bit data. SWR convert frame. This function will normally take the SWR context, the output, and the input. So SWR CTX. Then we need the uh, outputs. So L AV new frame and the input LAV, uh, oops, AV frame. This will also create an AV error. So response, con convert the frame. And that's, that's about it. Again, we will need to unwrap the frames and break from here. Right now, I feel like we need to have a, just a check to see if the samples, the number of samples are, are different or not. I'm not certain uh, yet how to handle it if the samples are different, um, but we should check for it in case it happens. So if um, SWR gets out samples, um, it's kind of similar to this, but now we need to have the AV new frame number of samples. If this is not the same, no, get out samples. We need the out samples of normal frames. So, um, the best case is exact same like this. If the amount, if the samples that we get out, um, was uh, for the converting, oh, CTX, then something went wrong. So this will be the same to the normal number of samples because else something went wrong and we won't get proper out of it. So let's just create a quick function here. I'm not certain if you will run into it, but that's something I will fix later. So, um, Number of samples not equal. I'm not 100% certain if this will also cause trouble with the whole exporting. Normally not, but yeah. Normally a lot of the times the code should work, whilst it doesn't. Okay, and then we have our previous code. So what we need to do here is basically this AV frame, we don't need this anymore. And um, this is also number of samples. Normally this will be the same as LAV new frame. So we better create um, change this already. We also should change this because we need to get the data that has been converted to 16 bits. 
and the same thing for LA, uh, for the LV, uh, AV frame here. I think that's about everything that we need to do. So let's quickly have a build and see if everything still works or if our PC catches fire. Okay, let's play this. And we get an error. <laughs> so let's see what the readable error is this time. Um, so SWR unlock set options 2. That's where the problem happens right now. Okay, that's over here somewhere. Yep. So over here something goes wrong. Um, does this also create an AV error? So if normally this should print an error already. But yeah. DD extensions being DD extensions, we don't get the print. We don't get the actual print. It says that there's a problem with the SWR unlock set options too, but we ran it before and it ran fine. So what is the problem this time? So let's check what's going wrong here. So L and um, video uh, get audio, L audio off. So we, we create a new audio stream. Um, we check if the file is open or not. Then we seek to the beginning of the file of the stream data. We flush the buffers to check uh, to put everything on points. We allocate some data. We create a new uh, variable for the packed byte array that we will put inside of our audio stream. And then we start going through every single frame. So if packet um, is blah, 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 then we break the packet. Um, I think our decoding packet, I think we should also AV packet and ref AV packets because if it breaks, it breaks out of this while loop, so it won't go over this one anymore. So that's probably needed. That's probably not causing the issue though. Okay, so the next while loop, we receive the frame, we go over everything, we create a new frame here. Um, we get a buffer, we convert the frame, we have a check that we should probably replace by something that actually fixes it. And I'll embed it line. I think we should, Let's just have this as AV frame, maybe. Um, then we have the audio vector, um, the data. Then we basically copy the data to the vector itself. Um, next up, we copy all the data to the temporary byte um, byte array that we assign in the header file. Over here, byte array. Then we append the array and we have the AV frame and we continue. And then basically we have some cleanup and then setting the data and such. I think we should probably also assign this to a null pointer to begin with. Maybe that would fix it. Let's see. Okay, so let's run. Okay, that was a problem. We had to assign it to a null pointer. <laughs> okay, so working, but we still don't have audio. If we, if we just comment this one out, let's copy this. Print, and let's get data. Okay, that's just empty. That's just completely empty. Oh, no, 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 this, yeah, no, 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 no. We need, <laughs> whoops. So we need to check if this is bigger or the same as zero to know if there are no errors. So normally this should work. Let's remove the sprint. And now this should work. Okay, and now normally we should get audio. Okay, so it prints a lot of zeros. Let's hope it's not all zero. Let's try one more time. Okay, so the audio length is 20, but we still don't hear anything. I'm probably doing something wrong with the AV seek frame. So the default stream is selected and timestamp. Okay, so I think the stream index, let, let's put it on minus one so the, the default one gets selected. Let's do this and let's hope this works. Okay, yeah, no, it's still zero. So something is still going wrong. Okay, I think I know what I'm doing wrong. So I should probably assign this to zero. So let's see if this works. Okay, let's run this. And normally we should have audio. It's taking longer, so that's a good sign. Okay, so it took long because we have this, uh, I got this print here. Let's quickly close this and let's compile one more time. Voila, so the printing was causing lag, but it's basically plays instantly. So it's working. So I'll commit these files for people to see. Um, decoding audio. Let's push this. 
and that's gone. Okay, so yeah, it was quite an episode. The last couple of minutes were a lot of bug fixing and bug fixing inside of FFM pack and GD extensions. It's not a smooth experience and you never 100% know what's going wrong. But most of the time when something's not working, it's probably your own fault. The way that I do troubleshooting is basically I type in utility functions, print, and then I just print tests or working and I just put that on random places in the code to see where things go wrong. But yeah, that's it for this episode. In this episode, we learned how to decode the audio and get the audio inside of Godot from a video file. In the next video, we will go over getting a single, like getting the frame data from a video file. And before I go, a quick thank you to all my coffee supporters. Without them, this is not going to be possible, this whole series, because this is a very time consuming series. I'm also using the same code to put into Gozen, so it's kind of a win-win. I can make a tutorial and I can clean up the code in the process to make it better to import inside of my video editor that I'm making in Godot. If you want to see that progress on how that goes, please click subscribe. If you like this whole tutorial series, please click like. Somehow part three got more views than part two so far, which is kind of confusing. But yeah, thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Happy programming.